Okay, so if you're going to calibrate this with a photo gate, it's a lot easier. Uh, so you can do it by hand, it just takes more patience. Uh, I'm going to assume you have a vernier photo gate, uh, which I know a lot of people don't have. Uh, a lot of physics teachers have them. So the way I found to set up the photo gate here best, uh, initially I was using a laser and using it uh, wide so I didn't have to move it. Uh, but it was getting confused because there, there are two strands and the, the laser would drop and I'd have to keep adjusting it. I found what actually seems to work best is uh, to clamp the, the photo gate itself onto uh, a little piece of wood with something as a spacer so that the beam itself is very close to the center here. You have to test when you release this, always release it from the angle you'll actually be releasing it at. And you want to make sure that it doesn't touch the other side or bump it so that it's completely free during the whole range of uh, motion. Uh, then I just, you know, clamp it to the top here. Now, if you're going to use uh, the Vernier stuff, uh, uh, you can use the file here, uh, which I made, which is pretty neat, uh, makes it a lot easier, takes a lot of the thinking out of it, but you could do it from scratch. Just make sure you set your sensor to uh, pendulum timing mode. Uh, I've, I've done that in here. Um, if you haven't uh, seen that, you just go to experiment, set up sensors, show all interfaces, and then you put this to pendulum mode. Now, what I've done on top of that is I have it set so that when the pendulum first swings through, well, here, let me, this is supposed to be 37 swings per minute. Let me just start it here, and you'll see what, I'm, what I mean. So that one means the string went through the photo gate, the zero means it left, the one means it went through again. So this is where we're starting time zero. Um, even though time's obviously already started, that's what we're calling time zero. Now I have it set up so that it identifies what swing number you're at, like what cycle. And uh, it measures the period obviously, but it also calculates the period per dance, like meaning uh, I have it set for 60 seconds. Now you'll see that the cycles per dance actually changes. So this is supposed to be 37. Let's just make this 37.5 and let's make this uh, 36.5. And you'll see the period, the frequency, is changing over time. Uh, so initially I tried to be clever and, and figure out the average frequency or something like that. At the end of the day I found it's actually better just to time it for 37 cycles and see how close you are to 60. Uh, so this will will do that. It keeps a running tally of um, so you set the period desired for the full cycle which is 60 seconds and we're looking for 37 because this pendulum we want it to be 37. This is a live look of how much time's elapsed since it started or time zero. Not the literal time zero but the when it counted the zero cycle. Uh, and this tells you what cycle you're at, cycles per dance, and this even tells you the rate at which the uh, cycles is changing, so it, it, it changes over time. So here we go, this is good. So we got 59.822 seconds to do 37 cycles, and you may say, well, that's, that's pretty good, I'm, I'm happy with that. You can't be happy with that. 18 hundredths of a second is a significant fraction of the period for one cycle, so we want to make that number get get a little bit bigger. So we need to make our pendulum a little bit longer. That's where, when you look here, this uh, this turnbuckle comes in. So if I want to make it longer, I got to do this lefty, loosey. This is hard to do one-handed. So it's about one and a half, two, two and a half, three, Let's just do four and see see what happens. So we were at 59.8. Let's let's see what happens. So I'm gonna start it. So I start collecting this first. Erase and continue. Start. And our hope is that this will now take uh, take more time, but just a little bit more time. So you can see the time elapsing, you can see the cycles. We want to wait till we get to 37 cycles. And when it does, it's actually going to record that time for the full 37 here. Uh, so we don't even have to look it up on the table, which is kind of nice. 
Uh, you can see the cycles going up. Uh, you can see the uh, change in cycle is positive, meaning it's you're getting uh, more cycles per dance. The reason being the pendulum speeds up slightly as it deviates less from the center line. And you can see this actually uh, changes over time. I've noticed it tends to get uh, tends to get lower, tends to change, the rate at which it changes gets less. So hopefully I've managed to fill your 60 seconds or so here. So I think the last one was 59.82. Let's see if we did better. 60.075, so that was with four revolutions. So 60.075, I'm not gonna bore you, but now what I would do is we'd done three longer, I'd probably do one to two shorter and repeat. So uh, you do that with each of these pendulums. That's the labor of love, but that's what gets you the, uh, the results you want. Uh, the other way to do this, even if you don't have a, a photo gate timer, is you go 60 seconds, and then once you get one that you're really, really happy with, you've done it a lot of times, you do its neighbor, and you swing them at the same time, and you set your watch for a timer that will go off at 60 seconds, and you try as best as you can to start it exactly as you release it, and then listen for the beep and see how far the second ball trails or leads the first ball, and that'll tell you whether to make your pendulum a little longer or a little shorter. Um, so it's a little more tedious, takes a little bit more thought, but you can absolutely do this without a photo gate. It's just a lot nicer when you have one. Uh, by the way, if I was to uh, see when we got to 36 cycles, I would do this, and you can see that that changes. So as I go down the line, if I was going to do the 38, I'd, I'd, I'd do this up to, to 38. Um, just as long as we're here, it is also sort of fun to graph the delta y. Well, not with that scale, but... Well, I don't want to waste your time, but you, you can see it, 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 it changes. Um, so yeah, this is fun. There's this. Uh, I'll probably make another video where I can show you I made a simulation in Desmos that tells you exactly how long to make the string, but also animates what it's supposed to look like. Uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time on this, but it's, it's fun.